I'm a gorilla. In the last 18 months, there's been an explosion of ticks suddenly appearing amongst young people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, bro, 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 bro. You're a twat. But why has it happened now? Pedos have speedos. <laughs> and why is it affecting so many young people? My mum sucks dick. Not only on Thursdays. I'm Scarlett Moffat. Miss Piggy, oink, oink. And I'm going on an investigation in search of answers. <laughs> you can see the ones that are faking it because they have hoods over the faces. To speak to the families dealing with a mental health crisis. She was jumping, twirling, clapping. Mum, you're a lesbian. Brilliant. And to delve deep into my own past. As soon as that school bell went, it was as if my body wasn't my own. To try and find out if this has been magnified by COVID and lockdown. I haven't got a clue, but they just seem to be all coming out of the woodwork now. If it's now become contagious... I tick something you can catch. I'm panicking, thinking, am I going to get yeah. ticks? And if social media is part of the problem. <gasps> oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Do you need us to call 999? Yeah. yeah. It's been really hard. I've just got a newfound respect for Louis Theroux. Like, when you go on a ferry and stuff, it's like you're going on holiday, isn't it? So, I brought SPF. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to need it. Look at us, living the dream. <laughs> I'm heading to the lovely Isle of Wight to meet a teenager who has mysteriously developed ticks. She is one of the huge surge in cases who have developed symptoms that are very similar to traditional Tourette's. Emerging slowly in childhood, Tourette's has symptoms that include focal tics or uncontrollable body movements. But in these new cases, severe tics are appearing overnight and out of nowhere. I've come to meet one of the many people this has happened to, a teenager called Betsy. Hiya. Hello, are you all right? Yeah, I'm good. You yeah, I'm good, thank you. Oh, she geez. lives at home with her mum, Rebecca, a local school teacher. Oh, make yeah. yourself at home. <laughs> and I always do, honestly, I do. I always do. Thank you for having us. So right. right. How, how old are you, by the way? I'm 16. It was my 31st. Bitch, you're old. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <Jesus. laughs> I'm only 31, I'm Betsy. So sorry. <laughs> Don't worry, I've got a thick skin. Nothing you can say <laughs> can, uh, can offend me. I think me, my I teachers promise. have started to get a thick skin as well with the things I come up with. <laughs> the ticks yeah. aren't necessarily... They're not me. No, no. exactly. Yeah, and that's why um, what we did is we named my ticks. So it's like an alter ego, sort of. So we've named it Frankie. And nice. they're sort of just like somebody else. And we just kind of go, oh dear, Frankie, oh, for God's sake, Frankie. Sometimes the things Frankie yeah. comes out with are just so off She's the wall. She's got syphilis. Um, <laughs> um, Sorry. <laughs> Ellie Whitlock has syphilis and she's dead. Sorry, that's my friend. Okay. That's, that, that, yeah. that is, she would be absolutely fine with it. She can't yeah. say it. <laughs> Betsy's tics appeared suddenly and out of nowhere when she was at school. I was doing my mock exams in November 2020, and on a Thursday, during third period, <coughs> during a maths lesson, I started head jolting like that. I got really freaked out, didn't really know what to do, and then I started doing like a groaning, sort of like a uh, uh, like that. Mum came up and she was like, what's going on? <laughs> and the school nurse was like, I don't know. <laughs> But what's even more unusual is she wasn't the first in a class that it suddenly happened to. My friend Grace had like a small like twitch and then they kind of got worse in like the summer. Your friend did? Yeah. It's quite unusual having two people in a class and in, in a school to have tics. Because do you think, because that makes it almost sound as if it's, I know this sounds dramatic, but yeah, contagious like a cold. So if you notice when people tick together, the ticks get worse. So we kind of distance ourselves from each other because I kept setting her off and sending her into tick attacks. Really? But then, yeah, so that was kind of like, from going from like really, really good friends and like talking every single day to nothing at all, it's just kind of weird. 
when you've been to the doctors and things, have they said that it'll eventually go or that it... Nobody seems to know very much. I had a tick attack a month into having my ticks and I ended up having to go to A&E. It was quite frightening because it was so early on as well. Yeah, and then they gave us an appointment with a paediatrician. They just like run blood work and stuff to see if it was anything abnormal. And I haven't um, heard anything since. What a welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I might, I might just make Betsy's wonderful cake making skills. Oh, thank you. Miss milk, sugar. Miss Piggy, oink oink. <laughs> I feel like that's aimed at me because I'm eating cake. So are you and Grace the only ones in the whole school with ticks? I teach another, at least two. Yeah, I mean, I only know about those because I teach them and I wouldn't need to know that otherwise, so mm. I'm sure there are quite a few others around the place. Really? Um, they just seem to be all coming out of the woodwork now. I can't imagine what you must feel like sometimes. I was very sort of lost at the beginning. Um, I just really didn't know what the hell was going on. But I suppose, as I say, it's just part of Betsy now. Um, so I think the other problem is it's so exhausting for yeah. you, isn't it? Because I'm constantly moving and like shouting and swearing. It just wears you out, really. Because there's some days where I'm just like, I can't do this today. Like, I don't want the tick. And there's some days where you question it. You're just like, why can't I be normal? It's extremely unusual to have so many people in one school develop ticks. Conventional wisdom is that they can't be caught like a cold. But incredibly, transmission amongst friends isn't a new phenomena. We're learning about three new suspected cases in Leroy, and this news comes just days after two teens in Albany said that they were displaying similar symptoms. In 2011, at a school in upstate New York, a number of pupils began to tick. And before long, they started to spread. I had a couple people ask me if I was faking this. <clears throat> hey, what I said to them is give me one reason why I would want to fake this. Hey, because I'm missing out on my life right now. Like, that is petrifying. Some experts believed it was an episode of mass hysteria when a symptom like a cough or tick spreads through a population because of fear or anxiety. It's bizarre. It's unexplainable. It really is scaring everybody and wondering what is going on in our community. When you look at all the symptoms, there's something darker. There is something actually happening to their bodies. That is bizarre. 19 pupils developed ticks at Leroy. Two years later, they disappeared in all but one of them. And even now, nobody is quite sure why it happened. So could all of these new cases have been sparked by a similar episode of mass hysteria? I've had my own experience of mental health issues that have manifested as physical symptoms in the past. It was my last year of primary school and I actually developed tics as well. I remember being in a science class and we were talking about lungs and how, just how lungs work. And I remember feeling like this overwhelming feeling of like being totally aware of all of a sudden how my body works. And then when I got home, I remember just all of a sudden developing these tics, these breathing tics where I'd like sort of, sort of stutter with my breath or I'd breathe really deeply to the point where then I'd just, I didn't even realise I was doing it. And then blinking all the time, like not feeling as if... It started because I, I felt like my eyes weren't moist enough, which sounds ridiculous now, but then it just grew and grew and I'd just, I'd just constantly blink and then people at school would be like, what are you doing that breathing thing for? And so then I'd try and make a conscious effort not to do it. And then as soon as that school bell went, it would like, it was as if my body wasn't my own. It would just go into overdrive and, uh, yeah, they would happen, like, constantly. And around the same time, my dad got diagnosed with cancer and we didn't know if he was going to come home and, and it was just so stressful. It was a bit of a scary time. 
After two years and with the help of a doctor, I learnt to manage my tics. Like, I think when everything sort of calmed down and my dad came home from the hospital and it just went. But learning about how this new wave of cases could be contagious has got me worried. I'll be honest, doing this documentary, I am a bit nervous about catching it again. I am worried. I'm investigating an explosion of ticks among young people that have suddenly developed out of nowhere. Love you, Teasy smile. I've discovered a cluster of cases on the Isle of Wight, but that doesn't explain why so many young people are developing ticks elsewhere in the country. To try and throw some light on the mystery, I've made an appointment with a psychiatrist. So I'm off to meet Dr Chowdhury and he specialises in children with tics and Tourette's so I want to know a little bit more about how lockdown and Covid's affected his work and I'm a little bit nervous because I've never met a psychiatrist before. I'm hoping that um, he's not secretly psychoanalysing me. After seeing their GP, many children who develop tics need to get a referral to a Child and Adolescent Mental Health Service, or CAMS for short. Hello, I'm here to see Dr Chowdhury. They offer invaluable support across the country to young people struggling with their mental health. Hello! Oh, it's lovely to meet you. Hello, nice to meet you. Well, thank you for seeing us here. The last year and a half has been so difficult with lockdown and COVID. Has that seen an impact on your job? In terms of the number of referrals, it has been quite, quite demanding. We've seen a dramatic increase in the last uh, six months in the number of girls being referred to our clinic with ticks and Tourette's. And it's not just here, we're hearing it across the country in specialist tick clinics from where they were seeing four or five girls perhaps a year, they were seeing four or five girls a week presenting what? with these difficulties. That's taken me back a bit, that, actually. I'm quite speechless with that. And especially young girls as well, like, that's a huge increase. It is a huge increase. Mental health services are stretched everywhere. It's interesting to hear that these cases of sudden onset ticks have predominantly affected girls, especially as boys are four times more likely to develop traditional Tourette's. Why do you think we're not seeing it in young boys? It is interesting. Girls tend to have more anxiety difficulties. During lockdown, I know a lot of my patients would struggle. They'd feel scared, uh, worried about the future, worried about the family. Uh, without being stereotypical about boys, boys were, well, they were on the Xboxes. They were talking to their friends. They had a social life because you're online chatting to people. So you had your way of coping, I guess. And a lot of the boys liked lockdown. I mean, that's quite shocking, because really what we're saying there is it was good to let the kids on their Xbox and chat away to the friends playing games. To try and get a better understanding of the cases coming forward, Dr Chowdhury has invited me to sit in on a consultation with a new patient. <laughs> How it really hurts. Hello, hello, hello. 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 <laughs> 11-year-old Echo and their mum, Laura. OK, OK, nice to meet you. You said there's some difficulties. Yeah, I have sudden onset Tourette's syndrome. It's been a whirlwind of a year, really. She's had it a year, starting in September last year. September 2020. 2020, yeah. And so it coincided exactly with the first day back of year six at primary school. Yeah. No ticks beforehand. Nothing. It's... And I thought, <laughs> I thought, this is very strange. So we monitored her throughout our school day. By the end of the school day, she was jumping, twirling, clapping, um, making noises, shouting boo. And that was that, wasn't it? And then as the days went on, the ticks became worse and worse. And they'd have a tick where they'd suddenly say, run out in front of the cars, and she'd run, and you'd have to grab her back. We get hit quite a lot, don't we? Me and your dad, yeah. Stupid motherfucker. It started on the day you went back to school, so... Yeah. Any particular worries about school? There was two different teachers that I'd never had before and that I didn't know if they were going to be strict or whatever because usually the one that I had had was 
quite strict to people, so I was just a bit worried about that. Okay, what do you want to do when you grow up? I really want to be like a, an actress or a singer. Is that your thing, drama and performing? And do you do drama clubs and things? I did, but then I fell out with a girl there really badly, so I don't go anymore. Oh, when was this? Just at the same sort of time as the tick started. So there's a couple of stresses at that time then, OK. In terms of, I guess, questions you have for me, what questions would you have? The first thing I would want to know is if you think it is Tourette's. Uh, OK. Uh, well, yes and, yes and no. It, it is Tourette's, and in the definition of Tourette's, motor tics and vocal tics, and they're present pretty much every day. But it is a spectrum, so you've got Tourette's on one end, and at the other end you have what's called functional tics, where there's some psychological stress. It's still tics. It's not that you're weird, not that you're mad, not that you're making them up. They're very real. So I think focusing on positive things, focusing away from the tics is a good, good way, focusing on your school stuff, or your drama, definitely. I think if we could help with the mood, the self-esteem, then the tics will sort themselves out. That's where I would like the management to go. Before record goes, I want to ask more about what lockdown was like. I'm like a social butterfly, I feel like you are as well. It's hard when you can't just go out and meet a friend and... Yeah, really, it was really hard. We did have quite a few tears where you said, I feel forgotten, I feel like I've got no friends to go back to, and that's quite interesting. Did that make you a bit more anxious about going back to school? Yeah, a lot of the new people had moved off from the same school, so they were all, you know, having fun with each other, and then I was just... I wasn't that with them. I think it's hard sometimes as an adult to put yourself in an 11 year old's shoes, but all you have as a kid is friends, all you have is school. When that's took away from you, you can see how that would be devastating. I'm on my way to Hertfordshire to meet another young person whose tics might be lockdown related. Oh, here we go. 14-year-old Nicole and her mum, Jordy. That is cute. Yeah, it's cute. Smell it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit possible. Peaches. Is that my accent? Peaches. Don't throw that no. <laughs> <laughs> I won't, I won't. Leading bitch. <laughs> <laughs> when it happened, was it vocal straight away? No, not straight. It was about... Silly bitch, she knows fuck all. <laughs> <laughs> so it was about two weeks, I think, and it started with, like, going ha-ha. And I was like, that was it. What is happening? I remember when it was the first tick attack and I started calling the man that was Ginger. I kept calling him a Ginger C-U-N-T. Yeah. Her swearing tics didn't start until her second tick attack. And during her second tick attack, she started swearing and I was like, Because oh. mm. up until that point, I think it was, like, a couple of months in. You're and gay. I was like, this is fine because as long as she's not swearing, and I know it sounds awful, but as a parent, mom, taking mom, your child out mom, and about, mom, all the stuff mom, she's saying, mom, mom, you can deal with. Mum, you're a lesbian. Brilliant. And then as soon as she swore, I was like, oh, please don't say this is going to stick. And then that was it then. And I was like, oh. Like many young people, Nicole spent most of the COVID pandemic and lockdown in her bedroom. This is cute. Fine. I feel like this is a lovely place to spend lockdown. Nice and cosy. What were you like before lockdown, before the ticks? There was barely a time that I was inside. I was always outside. I was always with my mates. I was always like out and about. So was this just before you got eight. ticks? Yeah. How did lockdown and the pandemic affect you? I would say that I struggled with school the most. I got a lot of schoolwork that I needed to do and I'd stress out about it. It made me tick. So I couldn't complete work because I was ticking that much. When I got Tourette's, I think, I did feel quite alone. I was called names all the time. I was always called names like freak or weirdo because of what I had. And I never really understood why. And obviously waking up with it, being a completely different person, scared me because I wasn't the person that I was. So when you first got ticks, where did you turn to for help? So the NHS and stuff like that, it did take a little while and it was a very long wait. So I think I kind of turned to social media and there were a lot of people on there that had Tourette's. So I kind of turned to them and asked them for help. And so did my mum. We kind of tried to reach out to as many people as we could. Can I have a little look at some of the people you follow on social media? Okay. So who's 
Holian Maria. So she posts loads of stuff like Tourette's versus bingo and like going out. But seeing other people, it might, you know, trigger me or it might like give me more ticks. Have you ever got one of Holly's? Just mostly swearing ticks that me and her have had. Look at the amount of 9.5 million views. What? 9.5 million people have seen that video. Yeah. What's the video? Owen McDonald had a hernia. Owen McDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. I've picked up a few takes from other people. I've picked up things from just things I've seen. Do you feel like then you don't want to watch other people with ticks in case you pick ticks up? I think at the start, any video I saw that had got like a person that had got Tourette's, I'm just been like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Because I think it also sets you off. Like the amount of times I've been very calm. I've seen someone ticking and then I'm just self, I'm just like, right, this is great. <laughs> no. Nicole doesn't just consume social media. She and her mum set up an account to create their own Tourette's themed content. Fuck you! Fuck you! Over lockdown, their TikTok accounts grew. Mom, give you water! Okay. Ha! Attracting over one million followers. My mum sucks dick. Only on Thursdays. <laughs> I think at the start I did get kind of nervous because I think I posted like one video and then I was like, no, 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 take it down. And I didn't like post it again. And then after that, I kind of had a discussion with my mum. She was like, you either need to be on there and be proud of it, or just don't post at all. And I think I kind of decided just kind of, and it sounds in a rude way, but to just suck it up and just, just do it. And so do you feel like without social media, you wouldn't be this confident, bubbly person that I see? Uh, I think so, yeah. I think with the Tourette's as well, I kind of found who I was. I got more confident. Now I'd kind of go up to anyone and just talk to them and have a conversation. But when before, you know, old Nicole wouldn't do that at all. The power of suggestibility is huge, especially on social media. The way the algorithm works, the more you watch a certain type of video, the more that Instagram and TikTok and all them throw them types of video back. So the big question is, are you more susceptible to then getting these sudden onset cases of ticks if you're watching those type of videos. The role of social media in our lives is a hotly debated topic. It's often blamed for damaging our mental health. Speaking to Nicole has raised the question whether social media could have a part to play in the rising cases of young people developing ticks. It's a subject debated at length online. A mysterious spike in Tourette's leads back to YouTube star. Psychiatric disorders can spread via social contagion. No. Social media definitely looks like it's something I need to look into further. During COVID and lockdown, our social media use was estimated to have increased by 82%. And Tourette's is incredibly popular. On the platform TikTok, Tourette's videos have been viewed five billion times. One of the people Nicole began following after her ticks developed was Holly. I suck on my eggs. I can't eat eggs, I'm allergic. I've always been seen as a person on this app that is very, very positive about having Tourette's. Nice car! And she's got quite a following. So I'm off to meet Holly. She's got around, eight, well, more than 800,000 followers. So she's kind of a big deal on TikTok. Holly's videos documenting the Tourette's are hugely popular, almost turning her condition into entertainment. Hello, how are you? Are you all right? Thank you. Shall I take my shoes off or no? No, no, no. I'm all right. Fairy cock. Sorry. Do you have normal milk? What, like what, from a cow? Yeah. You can give me milk from a nut, from, from a goat, from a cow. I'm not, I'm not asked. <laughs> I just like a brew. One, two, one, two. Bitch. Sorry. <laughs> I guess worse than that. Like, is it okay to laugh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is my fr most frequently asked question. Okay. It's fine to laugh. If I say something funny, laugh. It's absolutely fine. I prefer it when people laugh with me. I always say to people, you can laugh with me, but don't laugh at me. And yeah. everyone's like, oh, okay. You put your 
sort of Tourette's yeah. out there. Like, when I'm looking at my social media, I look at what gets a lot of views and likes and then what doesn't do yeah. so well. Does that sort of subconsciously make you feel like you have to do more content where you're ticking? Yeah. 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 Do you feel like you can capitalise off it or not so much? It's not something that I've, like, sought out. People would come and say, oh, do you want to do a paid promotion here and a paid promotion there? And I'm like, sure. But the main thing is to try and help other people, you know, because I don't want anyone else to feel like I did in the very beginning because I was terrified. When you're saying, like, you sort of create... Oh, look, it's the queen of the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my favourite one so far. <laughs> it's not wrong. <laughs> Influencers can earn money from sponsored posts, depending on how many followers they have. Can I be in one of your TikToks? Of course you can. For Holly... This could mean being paid up to £350 for advertising a product. I always worry that if someone sees my internet Pussy. history... Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you just tell us what to do and I'll do it. Cunt! Oh, my God. <gasps> Sorry. Oh, you said the C word. <laughs> do you just not suppress them? Do you just let them all hang out? I let them all Let lie. them loose. Right, OK, I'm going to pretend to read now. Today... Holly is recording a video that incorporates a motor tick where she inadvertently throws a book. Please leave before I hurt you. That wasn't directed to you. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Fuck you, Channel 4. Oh, my God. <laughs> I've said that a few times and I haven't got ticks. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> By holding the book, Holly knows that at some point, a ticks um, will take over. What do you want? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you told us to stand to yeah? <laughs> <laughs> now I've just got to wait. So what are you thinking of now, just not throwing the book? No, I'm just not thinking about anything, really. It'll, it'll, it'll happen when it wants to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, where did that go? It's crazy that you know your brain will go there and throw the book. The fact that I'm filming a book, me reading a book, there's something already going on unconsciously backstage going... Mm -hmm. And it sort of it sort of goes from there, really. It's a bit. It's very interesting. Get out of my face. Holly also shares the most difficult side of her condition with her followers. <coughs> when you actually suppress ticks, it's like this horrible build-up of energy. And then when it eventually comes out, that could cause me a seizure or that could cause me a massive tick attack that would last for hours and hours on end. So do you feel like if you didn't have your social media, that your ticks would be a lot calmer? Possibly. But the only way to guarantee calm ticks is to just <laughs> stay indoors and do nothing. There could be a link between getting this onset new ticks from watching people with ticks and Tourette's on social media. I've heard, I've heard a lot about that. You sort of battle with yourself sometimes with it. You think... Oh, am I, I, I think, am I actually doing good? Am I doing everyone a favour or am I making the situation worse? And I think that's... A couple of my other friends have gone through the same thing and I think it's... They say it's, it's just natural because you've got such a big platform. You feel like you could be responsible for, for, these, for some of the cases. You see people all the time with new cases and you think, oh, was that me? <laughs> but I know it. I know it's a bit... Um, I think that's more my own self-doubt than anything else. With such a serious accusation hanging over the Tourette's influences, Holly has asked me to meet some of her fellow TikTok stars. Penis. So I can hear what they think. Fuck off, bike. My tics change so frequently, so I don't always have the same tics. Um, penis. Penis. Your dog looks like a hamster, I'm sorry. Fucking push bikes. Please buy a fucking car! We're trying to do it for the younger generation to get them happy to be out in public and ticking without being judged. <clears throat> Fuck off. For the rest of the evening, I've got to sedate myself Ooh, to prevent a ticket. Well, fuck off. The threats is a fingerprint, it's different to each person. We can't go to an escape room, I'm blind. <laughs> I'll never get out. <laughs> 
our content is raising awareness for Tourette's syndrome and to hear that people think we're actually causing a problem is it can be really quite scary but How do you feel that some people say you could be the reason why young people are getting ticks? Bastards. Bastard fathers. <laughs> I think it's disgusting. Yeah, it's like, yeah. how can you blame someone <clears throat> who's trying to do the right thing for exactly what we're trying to help? Yeah. Like, you I... can't literally make us the villains. Because obviously when you're the heat of day, your ticks are enhanced, aren't they, because you're together. <laughs> do you ever get that when you're watching people on social media as well. We can pick them up from each other because we've got it. People that haven't got it can't suddenly get it by watching. It's an STD. You can't get a disorder by watching someone else with a disorder. When my tics started, I was so alone. I knew nobody. I'd never met one single person with Tourette's or tics in my life. I didn't know what to do. But now I've got all these guys, and that was from me reaching out to people online. Oh, no, I had a lovely woman tapping on the shoulder. Ryan! <laughs> <laughs> she was showing her son my videos and said, look, well, if he can do it, he grows up, so can you. Don't turn out like this, son. <laughs> <laughs> it's a difficult dilemma. On one hand, the influencers are providing help to people struggling to access medical care. Yet on the other hand, the content could be helping to exacerbate the problem. But as we're finishing and saying our goodbyes, I notice Ryan rush to the door and fall to his knees. Yeah. Is there anything I can do to help or not? Yeah. Really? Ryan has suffered a tick attack. Sorry. <laughs> Don't say sorry. <laughs> it's a reminder of how serious the Tourette's condition can be. Oh, this is heartbreaking. <laughs> Abnormal electrical activity in the brain is making his muscles painfully spasm. <laughs> the feeling of it is, mm. it's not something you can describe to other people. It's like, it's like, it's like it's elect it's electricity everywhere. going through your body. <laughs> Do you need us to call 999? Yeah. Yeah. I'll talk to them. Yeah? And I asked for the ambulance. <laughs> oh! Oh my, god, oh my 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 god. It's absolutely terrifying. Ryan has started to headbutt the floor. Not long after, the ambulance arrives and administers first aid. Unfortunately, Ryan's tick attack continues for another 15 minutes before he was allowed to return home. Not long after, I went to visit him. Hello. Hello. Oh, Are you all right? Never mind me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, you scared the shit out of us. <laughs> oh, my word, how many animals have you got? A lot. <laughs> I've got a therapy rabbit. Black and white. Do the animals really help? Because, I mean, we are in a zoo yeah. here, yeah? So, the ambulance crews, some of them know to grab her straight away when they come in, because uh, she will... It's, it's, you have to see it to believe it. Um, she comes and lays on me and vibrates when I have my Really? Yeah. I love that you, like... <laughs> you've got your own little haven, like, you know what helps you. Are you all right? I feel like I'm nervous seeing you because, like, <laughs> you did give us a massive shock. I've never seen anything like that before. What does it feel like when that's happening? The only way I can describe it is... If I'm at, do you know what a cattle prod is? Yeah. It feels like somebody's putting that up against my back and then I can feel everything. My veins almost feel like they're on fire. I can feel like all the muscles feel like they're tearing and constricting. Nobody should feel that, do you know yeah. what I mean? And you almost feel like your bones are fragile as well <laughs> and brittle. The sort of romanticising around ticks. People will watch TikTok influencers with millions of followers and just see sort of 
the fun side. You don't think about the actual physical pain that people are in, and I think, like, honestly, it was really scary. It's not just, you know, sitting there swearing and having a laugh. It's, <laughs> it, yeah. it's, it is painful. It's, there's a lot to deal with. People need to see the reality of it. Blaming social media for the rise in sudden onset ticks feels a little simplistic, but romanticising the condition could be encouraging young people to think that Tourette's is aspirational and will give them a social media presence. It doesn't take long searching online to find what appears to be children imitating ticks for likes and attention. You can see the ones that are faking it because they have like hoods over the faces and they tend to be sort of like over exaggerating ticks or doing sort of silly dances with the ticks. Tourette's influencers have called out the fake accounts. It's just so ridiculous and you know it's wrong because you've got your hoods over your face. They make it harder for all of us content creators who actually have Tourette's to make our videos. Why would you want to do that? It is spreading the seed of doubt and unfortunately it's the people who actually have tics and Tourette's. They're the ones suffering because they're the ones that are being called liars and fakes. One person who has struggled with this is 14-year-old Nicole, who started posting about a Tourette's after developing tics in lockdown. Why are people saying that? Because saying people... I take it, I don't get it, I'm proving. Because How much? How freaking you much? You don't have to prove it to anybody. <laughs> All right? Hi. Hello. Hello. Come on in. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I've come back to speak to her and her mum, Jodie, to find out how much it affects them. Why do you think people do fake it? Well, what do you think they're gaining from it? Clout. Clout. I do think it is just for attention or just for the likes or just for the follows. It just confuses me, I think. Like, I don't understand why someone would fake that. When I was watching one of your TikToks, it was really distressing, you know, when people were just, well, accusing you of fake and ticks, really. We did sit after that, once you'd calmed down and you weren't ticking anymore, about whether or not we wanted to do social media anymore because it was just, it was like one of the worst experiences of both of our, it was awful. Yeah. Saying she was faking it, saying that she was a freak, saying that you were a weirdo, why would you fake this? I just think people just think I'm faking it for clout. They just think I want the attention and I want all of it, but I don't. People just think I'm faking it just for that. Have you ever faked ticks? No. No? Why are you looking at me? Of course I don't know. <laughs> no. Do you ever think about coming off social media at all? I have a few times. I think you have as well. Yeah, there's been there have been some like make or break moments, like when she's been really upset and I'm like, this is this, is this worth doing this? But then the next day when you've had a bit of sleep and you like process what's happened and you think there are so many messages I get on Instagram from other parents going thanks for sharing this you've made me feel like I'm not alone like oh I'm getting a bit welly oh. <laughs> um, and, and you know you're making a difference so it's worth it as Don't long as she's cry. happy I'm happy and if she wanted to stop 100% it would stop During my investigation, I found that there are many factors at play in the rise of these sudden onset ticks. One thing that has been repeated to me time and again is the struggle for help that these new cases are having. I've come to meet neurologist Dr Tammy Hedley, one of the country's leading experts, to find out what she thinks and whether there is a solution. Thank you for coming. It's very kind of you to give us your time. Why do you think there's been a huge increase in onset ticks? I think the scale of the problem has been escalated by partly the pandemic, partly the change in people's access to social media during the lockdown. I've actually spoken to Holly, who is a Tourette's influencer. She's got a really large following. And she did worry what she added to the problem. So we always say to children and families, if you're experiencing tics, try to take attention away from them and don't talk about them and don't think about them and distract yourself. So here we've got 
complete opposite scenario where people are watching very charismatic, powerful social influencers showing tics to people who are then getting them suggested into their brains. So do you think that blaming Tourette's influencers, do you think that's fair? It's not as simple as saying it's just the social media. I think this yeah. th that would be a mistake. So now, some young people have got a history of having had tics when they were younger. There's a higher number of young people in that group who have suffered anxiety. And there are a higher representation of children with neurodevelopmental difficulties, so things like dyslexia or attentional problems, ADHD. So we're still trying to gather this data and explore the risk factors, but we've got media now. It's part of life and social influences are here to stay. I think we need to understand and get them on board as to how to help so that what they're doing is positive. So maybe using their influence to talk instead about ways to distract from the movements, things that have helped them, how to pay attention away from the movement conditions so that people who can't get access to services or can't be seen quickly by doctors can know how they can help themselves and their families. It's understandable after the COVID pandemic that the NHS is struggling. And I can only hope that Tammy and the relevant departments get more help to deal with the rise in new cases. One thing for sure is that the young people affected need all of our support. On the Isle of Wight, it broke my heart to hear that Betsy hadn't seen her best friend Grace since their tics developed. We know that when people tick together, we set each other off. We just distance ourselves just to kind of not. And that's, yeah. that's because you are good friends. Yeah. I can't imagine with my best friend saying, you know, I love you that much. I'm going to upset myself by not seeing yeah. you. Like with lockdown, it was like for everyone's sake. And yeah. for our sake, I think it was what we both needed. But many months after not seeing each other, they've begun to hang out again. It was hard to try and like stay away from each other because like we had bubbles in school and we would pass each other and we would see each other. Yeah. And I think for the first few weeks, we were kind of just like, it was quite awkward in a way yeah. because going from talking every day to like not talking at all. I guess you don't really want to hurt your friends. No, exactly. You want them to be fine, you want to be healthy. Yeah. You mm. want to make sure they're okay. Like, like trying to scream at each other's faces. <laughs> yeah, we like sworn at each other. Like we had one <laughs> where we were in shooter and I just kept saying, fuck you. And then Grace would go, fuck you. You got about <laughs> this close to each other's faces. <laughs> <laughs> Four months after I met Betsy, her tics have improved. So I wanted to see if the same could be said about Echo. Hello. Hi. Look at you two. Look at your hair. We're matching. We're matching. <laughs> Do you feel like things have improved with your tics? Because I know primary school was a bit stressful. I haven't had tics in such a long time now, for about a month, I think. What? This is the best news. Yeah, all of a sudden just just stopped, didn't they? You just seem so confident now. Yeah, secondary school's definitely done a lot for me. <laughs> I'm really proud of her. She's come on so far. It's interesting we were talking about lockdown. I think that lockdown had a massive impact that we didn't realise. I think now since life has gone back to normal, you feel a lot better, don't you? And yeah, I'm, I'm really, really proud. Really proud of her. <laughs> I also wanted to come and see Nicole again. While Echo and Betsy have seen some improvement, for Nicole, things haven't really changed. The last time we spoke, I feel like you sort of explained to me that ticks were a part of your personality mm. and they make you quite a confident person. How do you think you'd feel if, I don't know, by some miracle tomorrow, all the ticks would be gone? I do think I'd be relieved so then I didn't have to deal with so much on my shoulders but at the same time I do think it wouldn't feel right because I do feel that the Tourette is now a part of me so it's just who I am. Because I've seen how difficult it is for you sometimes I think I just find it hard 
to understand why you would not just want to have them gone tomorrow. It sounds weird, but I would... I enjoy how much it makes people laugh. I'm not going to lie, I don't think I'm the funniest person, but I do think my Tourette's is quite funny. Yes, it can be a problem. Yes, it can be very annoying. However, it's who I am now, so I can't really take that back. But the hate does get to me sometimes. Being called a freak just because of I'm a little bit different, it doesn't make you feel great about yourself. Who wants to be normal anyway? <laughs> what even is normal? <laughs> It's the perfect storm. Covid and lockdown have made us sit in our house. We've practically been prisoners in our own home, which has meant we've been glued to our phones. We've took a deep dive into a rabbit hole of consuming more social media. The pandemic's also affected our mental health. We're more anxious, more vulnerable. It's affecting our kids more than anybody else. And all the focus throughout this, rightly so, has been vulnerable people and the elderly. But I feel like in doing that, the youngsters have been completely forgotten and they've been the ones that, in this crucial time of their life, are stuck in the bedrooms. I think we need to take a break, hug your friend, go out, play parks, make dens. I don't know what kids do nowadays, but just do it with your friends in actual real life.